Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ashley and I'm an architect in Ontario and in this video I'm going to be sharing four lessons that I learned in failing the exact exam. As you may know from my previous video, I failed the exact exam. And in order to become an architect in Canada, you need to pass the exact exam. And so perhaps you're thinking about writing the exam or perhaps you've written the exam and you failed it. Well, in this video, I'm gonna be sharing the four lessons that I learned and perhaps that will help you in the process. So if you're interested, let's get started. So as you may know, and I'll include the link down below to the video and where I talk about my journey and how I fail the exact exam. And so throughout that journey, there was a lot of lessons that I learned which helped me in the end to pass the exams. And so for me, it was a whole journey. And if you're interested in my journey, I'll include a link down below to that video. It wasn't an easy process. And when I was reflecting on what I did wrong, there was a lot of things that I learned that I needed to improve upon in order to pass the exam. And so these are those four lessons. And number one, prepare a study plan. Now this may sound so simple and logical, but believe it or not, when I took the first attempt writing the exam, I didn't really have, I started a study plan, but I wasn't, I didn't really develop a very structured plan that I followed through. So it is very important to develop a detailed study plan. Understand what resources you plan to include in that study plan. So before you do that study plan, it would help to do some research as well. Try to figure out what books and resources would be helpful and follow the exact guideline. There's a guideline, a study guide, which they break down the topics and objectives of the exam, which you should follow and try to go through them and understand those concepts as much as possible. And other resources that I found really helpful were actually the materials for the ARE. Now the ARE goes into a lot more detail than the exact exam, but using some of those materials and studying a little bit above and beyond is actually quite smart for this exam. And so I actually use a lot of the ARE tools in preparation for the exact. And so when I had all my resources and the books that I wanted to look through in preparation for the exact, I started to structure them accordingly to those objectives. And I started to allocate a month per objective, for instance, and really start to plan out the next few months. And so I really worked out week by week what I was gonna do, and I was also realistic. I wasn't realistic the first time, but the second time going into it, I knew that I needed to be a bit more realistic with my plan. I knew that I'll most likely get really busy at certain periods of the year. So I took that into consideration. And during the times that I had a bit more time to study after work, then I would have a lot more modules to cover. And so I knew that was important. And I knew too that I had to rely on my weekends to study because it was very hard for me to study during the week. Um, so make sure you understand your schedule and you're realistic with your study plan. And that is really important to have a, a, a really thoughtful and detailed study plan in order to be successful in the exam and to be successful in your studying as well. Number two, request a review. Now, if you have failed the exam, something that I didn't know during my first attempt, but on my second attempt, I did find out that there is a request for review. Now, if you felt that you passed that exam and you should have passed, but you received a fail, then I would request a review. And so they'll review and reevaluate your exam to see if you were, if you should have actually passed or not. And so this was something that I wish I knew uh, prior uh, because maybe my results would have been differently, who knows? But on my second attempt, I did request a review and it made a difference. So if you felt that you should have passed and you prepared for the exam and then you received the results and you felt like it didn't match the knowledge that you prepared and what the, the energy you put into your study plan and so on, and you felt pretty good in answering the questions on the day of the exam, or perhaps you didn't, but you felt that you should have passed, or perhaps you didn't feel that you passed, but you want to explore the possibility of 
having a reevaluation of your exam, that option is out there. Now you do need to pay for this, but should you successfully pass upon the review, then you do get reimbursed your money. So that's something to keep in mind um, and something to note that there is this option out there with the exact. Number three, arrive to the exam early. Now this sounds very simple, but my third attempt, I almost messed up my exam by not giving myself enough time. Enough time to commute, enough time to get lost, enough time to look for the building, the entrance, and I seriously cut it so close. Everyone was at their desks. I was the last one to get in and I was registering and I was just running to my desk and I was just already, my heart was racing. Honestly, you don't need that excitement or that stress going into the exam. It helps to go into the exam calm, give yourself time. You know, you can get stuck in traffic. If you're commuting through public transit, there could be issues that happen on the way. So give yourself that time. You will thank yourself at the exam by doing so. And you do need to go through registration and so on. So if you're not giving yourself enough time, then you're cutting it really close and it's just so stressful and then you may risk your chance of writing the exam because once they give out the test, I don't believe you're able to write. Now, I'm not sure about that, but I think that that might be an issue. So do make sure you arrive early to the exam, not on time, but early to the exam so that you can accommodate any issues that occurs when you're commuting to the location. Number four, never give up. Now, if you failed once, if you failed twice, if you failed three times, whatever the number is, just don't give up. If this is something you really want and it's a goal of yours and it's really important to you, then don't give up. Just refocus, reevaluate what you did wrong. You know, did you arrive to the test at the very last minute and you were all already stressed out from just the commute, right? What was it that caused you to not be able to perform your best at the exam? Did you really prepare enough? Were there questions that left you a bit puzzled, like you didn't know the answer to them because you didn't study that particular area very well, or, you know, uh, part four, contract and bidding and project management. There's a lot of contracts, so CCDC2 and so on, and you need to know those contracts really well. Did you understand the responsibilities of the architect, the contractor? Did you really have a, a strong understanding of those concepts? And if you didn't, take note of where you fell short in your studying and where you felt that you lacked the knowledge at the time of writing the exam. And so don't focus on the fact that you failed, just focus on what you can do to do better and what you lacked in that process of preparing for the exam. And I found too for myself that mindset of not thinking so negatively about the fact that you failed and look at it more in a positive light in that you tried. This is something that is outside of your comfort zone perhaps. Perhaps you're not really good at writing tests, right? That was my case. And so this is something that you're trying and there's nothing negative if you do fail. There's nothing negative about it. You're trying. So just get up and just keep going and focus in on those areas that you need to work upon and focus less on the fact you failed. You know, you have more attempts, you can keep going and rewrite the exam until you get those results that you've passed. And so for my case, if I had given up on my third attempt or even second attempt, then I wouldn't be here talking with you about my journey of getting licensed and I wouldn't be a licensed architect. So it's important not to give up and to keep going and pursuing those goals that you want in life. And it might, it's tough, it's tough, it's not easy. And if you are upset about those results, you know, take some time to really feel those emotions, right? Because we are human, but don't let that stop you from doing what you want to do and to pursue those goals. And don't be afraid to fail. There's nothing wrong about it. It could happen. And if it does, that's okay. At least you tried. But the worst thing you can do is not to get up and keep going. If that's something that you want to do, keep going and keep pursuing those goals. 
And I hope this video was helpful. And again, if it was, make sure to like the video. And if you want to support the channel, make sure to subscribe and you can do that here. If you're interested on some of the tools that I used in preparing for the exact, I would recommend this video here. I hope to see you on the next video. Until then, bye.